Hi, my name is Abel and I'm a cloud developer advocate specializing in DevOps. Today, we are going to look at YAML builds in Visual Studio Team Services. Now, in this video, we're going to dive in deep and look at exactly what YAML builds are and how to create a YAML build in VSTS. Now, in Visual Studio Team Services, we now have the ability to define our builds and build steps using YAML files. And we can check in those YAML build files right alongside our source code. Now, there are many benefits to being able to do this. Having your CI defined right alongside your source code means that your build is now versioned with your code. And you can also apply the same workflows to your build changes that you do with your source code, like pull requests and code reviews. From a DevOps perspective, this is really exciting stuff. Having pipeline as code has been on many people's wish list, and it's finally here. Now, I have to point out that this is not a new build system. The old task-based build system is not going away. YAML builds use the exact same engine as the task-based build system in VSTS and runs the exact same task and custom task. It's just another way to describe the build. Behind the scenes, the task-based build system uses a JSON file. And with the YAML file, it just uses the YAML. So really, it's still the same thing. So enough talking. Let's jump in and see it in action. All right, so here is my VSTS instance. Now, in my first tab, I have my source repo, which holds an ASP.NET application. And in my second tab, I have a task-based build that builds my app and runs my unit tests. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to restore my packages from NuGet, scan my code using white source, build my solution using Visual Studio, and then run all of my unit tests and then it's going to package everything up and publish things back to VSTS. And then in my third tab, here I have a list of all the build definitions that I have for this project. Now, the easiest way for me to add a continuous integration YAML build to this project is to just add a .vsts-ci.yaml file to the root of this repo. And once that file is checked in, VSTS will automatically create a CI build that will use that YAML file. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to jump into my Visual Studio code that's already pointing to my repo. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and create a new file. And the new file that I'm going to create is going to be called the .vsts-ci.yaml file. And let's go ahead and create a very simple build. Now, all we're saying here is we're going to queue this up using a hosted build agent, and we'll have one step, which is to run my script and just say echo hello world. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and check this in. And I'll give this a message. My comment will be created, YAML build. And then let's go ahead and push this back up to VSTS. Now, once I push my code into VSTS, it will recognize that there is this VSTS-CI.YAML file, and it will immediately create a continuous integration build. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's jump into my builds, and you'll be able to see that it's now created a Mercury Web CI build, and it's actually kicked it off. If we click on this link, well, you can actually see live exactly what it's doing. Now remember, this is an extremely simple build. All this is doing is it's going to go ahead and use a hosted agent. It's going to download all my source code. And when it's done doing that, it's going to run my command line script. And my command line script, all it says is just say echo hello world. So there we go. We've actually done it. We've created a YAML build. So that's great, but how do we create a real build, right? How is this YAML file laid out for a real build? Now, the easiest thing to do is just grab the YAML file from an existing task-based build. So let's go ahead back to my task-based build that actually works, right? What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and export this as a YAML file. So if we just click on the view as YAML, VSTS will take this task-based build and describe it as a YAML build. And here it is. So let's go ahead and copy this to our clipboard. 
we'll jump back into VSTS or VS Code. Let's copy and paste it. And now we can see exactly what this task-based build looks like and how it's laid out. Now, one of the greatest things about YAML files is just how readable everything is. The first block, well, that describes which queue we're going to use. And we're saying, let's go ahead and use my queue, my able.NET DevOps demo pool. And the agents that can run my build, they have a couple demands. They need to have Node, MS Build, Visual Studio, and VS Test. Next comes the steps, the build steps. And each of the steps will have tasks that run to implement this particular step. So right now, these tasks, they map directly to the tasks that are right here. So if you look at the task-based build, we're doing a NuGet, white source, build, run unit test, publish, copy, and, co and publish again. If we jump into our YAML file, you'll see that the first thing that we do is we're going to go ahead and NuGet and uh, use NuGet. We're going to do white source bolt. We're going to build using Visual Studio. And we're going to run our test, so on and so forth. And after the task name, you have your inputs. And these inputs map directly to the inputs that are being passed in in the task-based build system. And that's it. So it's extremely easy if you know what your tasks are called and what inputs need to be passed in to create a YAML build. Now, we can't just dive in and use this YAML file. There's a couple of things that we need to tweak to make sure this will work correctly. Now, at this moment, the exporter, there's, it's, a little, it's a little weird. Um, it doesn't do escape characters yet. So right now, if you want to print out a slash, well, slash is the escape character, so we have to escape the escape character. So let's go ahead and make sure we escape everything correctly. So that's going to include places where we need single quotes or double quotes, and also where we have our backslashes. All right, uh, I think there's a couple other places that I need to do this, like right here, and also right here and here. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a couple more places that I need to make this fix in. Here, here, and here. And let's see, here, here, a couple more, and one more. And I think that's all we need to do for escape characters. Now, we still can't use this directly just yet. Because notice, in this YAML file, we're using some build variables, right? Build platform and build configuration. Now, in our task-based build, let's go ahead and jump into our task-based build. If we look at our build variables, we actually have a build configuration and a build platform. But if we go into our YAML build definition, so let me go ahead and jump to this and edit it, you'll see that once I edit, that when we go and look at our variables, it's not going to have those two variables that we need. So let's go ahead and add this. The first one we're going to add is the build configuration. And the build configuration value that we're going to need is going to be release. And we also need the build platform, which is any CPU. Now let's go ahead and save this. Now, we are almost done. We can almost use this YAML file. Uh, but at this moment, if we try to use this YAML file, it's going to break when it tries to parse it. And the, well, the reason why it's breaking is if we go to line 26, where it creates this new line, that's not quite the way you're supposed to do that using YAML. Um, now, this input is for our Visual Studio test task. So if we jump back to our task-based build system, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the task. Here's my run my unit test. These are the test assemblies that it's looking for. So it's looking for a list. But how does the VSTS engine, or what is the format the VSTS engine is looking for, right? Um, and actually, I have no idea. But the easiest way to figure out what input, what the input should be, is to take this build, right, the task-based build system. Let's go ahead and export this as a JSON file. And in that JSON file, we can see exactly what gets passed into the VSTS build engine. So let's go to our builds. All right, so let's take our task-based build, and we'll export this. And when we export it, 
This will export as a JSON file. Now here's the JSON file. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we'll open it using Visual Studio Code. Now let's right click on this and format this so we can actually read it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look for the correct task. Now the task that we're looking for is going to be our Visual Studio test task. So let's scroll down here and take a look. Here is our steps for NuGet Restore, White Source Bolt. We build our solution. And after we build our solutions, this is where we run our unit test. And the variable that we're looking for, let's jump back into our YAML file. You can see that we're looking for test assembly version 2. Now in the JSON file, here it is, test assembly version 2. And this is what it's supposed to look like. So instead of a new line, it just needs a slash n. So we'll copy that, and we'll paste that in here. And there's one more case where this happens, and this is in when we copy our files, the contents, it's kind of wacky here. So let's go back into our JSON file. We'll find where we copy. So the next uh, task is publish, and then after we publish, we copy, and from here, Here's the contents, and the input that we need is this right here. So let's go ahead and copy this, and we'll paste it into here. And that's all we need to do. So now let's go ahead and check all of our changes back in. We created a real build. Let's push this back into VSTS. And once again, once I push this code back into VSTS, it's going to kick off the build, and the build is actually going to use this specific YAML file. So let's go and see what it's doing. So here's our build. Let's refresh this, and we'll see whether our build was successful or not. Oh, it looks like it broke. Why did it break? I bet it's a parsing error. So now let's go ahead and queue up this build so we can see why it broke. So let's go ahead. We'll queue a new build. And let's choose my agent correctly. I'll press on Q. And the error is a parsing problem. Line 43, column 5. So let's go to VS Code again. Let's go to line, what was that, 43? Here's line 43. And it looks like, ooh, I totally messed this up. It should have been content colon space, like that. So let me go ahead and save that. Let's make our changes again. Fix YAML. We'll push those changes back up into VSTS. And now, once those changes hit the repo again, it should trigger our build with the new YAML file. So let's jump back into VSTS. We'll cancel this, and we can see, look at this. It actually queued the build. So if we click on this link, it'll take us and it'll show us exactly what it's doing in real time. So what is this build doing? The very first thing it's going to do is it's going to go and download all the source code, including the YAML file. Then it's going to go and execute the build steps that is described in the YAML file. So in this case, it's going to restore my packages from NuGet. It's going to go ahead and use white source bolt to scan all of my code changes. It will then use Visual Studio to build my app, run my unit tests, package everything up, and then publish everything back to VSTS. So this takes a little bit of time to finish building. So while it's doing this, I wanted to show you guys another way that you can create a YAML build. You don't have to name your YAML build .vsts-ci.yaml. That's just an easy way to create a CI, and it will automatically happen. But really, you can name your YAML file whatever you want. But if you do, you'll have to manually create your build. So this is how you would do that. Let's go to Builds. We'll go ahead and say, let's create a new build. The template that we're going to choose is the YAML template. We'll click Apply. And from here, let's choose our agent queue, which is going to be my queue. And let's go ahead and find the YAML path. Now, the first thing that I need to do is make sure that I'm pointing to the right repo. So let me choose my correct repo. So it's going to be my Mercury Web repo. And let me go back to the process. And now, let me go ahead and find my YAML build file, which is right here. 
I click OK, and voila, that's all I need to do. If you need to add variables, you go into your variables, you go ahead and add them. If you want to turn this into a CI build, let's go into Trigger, and we can enable continuous integration. All right, so our original build, it should be done by now. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at that. So here is my builds. Looks like it's still in progress, but it should be almost done. Let's see where it's at. It looks like now it's publishing all my artifacts back up to VSTS, and as soon as it's done doing that, it will clean everything up. And when that's done, this build will be finished, and you'll be able to see that this is a real build that has happened. And all right, looks like our build is finished. Let's jump into the build report, and voila. You can see that this is a real build that compiles everything, that runs my unit test, and even collects code coverage information. So there you go. YAML builds is now a reality in VSTS. Pipeline as code is finally here, with all the benefits that come with it. Our builds can now be versioned with our code. Build changes can now be pull requested right alongside our code changes. And anyone forking our repos not only gets the code, but will also automatically get the build too. And that's ridiculously cool. Now, as of today, Pipeline as code only works for builds, but it will soon work with releases as well. And I can't wait for that to happen. Thank you.